Hello everybody, how are we all doing? Welcome to the United Stand. It's another head-to-head -head and it's McTominay versus Fred, the big one. I'm really looking forward to this, mainly because we need to buy a CDM as well. So ultimately, this for me is the biggest hole in the team. So how are these two comparing with each other? And I'm going to bring Fabinho in as well. He won't be on there, but I'll tell you what his scores are. Because if we want to close the gap on Liverpool or compete with Man City or Chelsea, then we need players of the quality of that what they've got. So how do these two people compare to one of the better CDMs in the Premier League, which is Fabinho? And just for a little bit of added taste, I've added in Donny's stats as well. Um, Donny does, hasn't played as many games as Fred and McTominay this season, but he has played in the last three Everton games twice as a holding midfielder, once as a 10. But although against Man City, you're not really a 10. There was a lot of defensive work in that. So let's just see how he's doing. Take it with a bit of a pinch of salt because he needs to play a lot more games so that he's played as many as them but it's interesting comparison so it's McTominay versus Fred it's not McFred because McFred is two players doing one person's job we're looking at these two on key midfield areas and the first one we're going to look at is going to be defensive duels per 90 and what this means is and obviously you can see Fred's won this is how many defensive duels they are averaging per 90 and this can be going up for a header it can go and be going for a tackle um you know it can be on the attack and you have to fight off somebody so de de defensive duels per 90 Fred is at 9.4 and McTominay is 6.9. Now, you probably understand that. Fred's more mobile. Um, he, he's, he's more of a hunter. He goes after the ball, whereas McTominay probably, you know, is there sitting back a little bit more as the CDM, especially over the last month, but not always this season. He has been playing in a two, and, you know, they're meant to mirror each other. So you get more mobility with Fred. But what I would say is, what's that percentage um, of winning uh, those defensive duels? And uh, they're pretty close. McTominay wins 58% of his defensive duels, whereas uh, uh, Fred is winning around 57%. So very, very close. But obviously, Fred is doing more. So, you know, the defence, you know, would McTominay keep that 58% if he was doing nearly 10 like Fred's doing? Maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. So they're very similar on how many they win but Fred's doing a much more of them. Now let's compare that to Fabinho. Fabinho is averaging around 7.1 defensive duels per game. So very close to McTominay, the CDM position, maybe a little bit with, more withdrawn. Interestingly enough though, Fabinho is winning 65%, which is massive compared to uh, the 57 and 58% of McTominay. He's, an, he's winning 7% more than them. So he's 65% of his defensive duels Fabinho is winning. So he's a better CDM, isn't he, basically, which is what we know. And that's, what, that's the upgrade. So McTominay, 6.9 defensive duels per 90, and he wins about 58% of them. Fred, slightly higher, 7.1 defensive duels per 90, but he wins 65% of them. And that's the difference between having an OK player doing it and a top player doing it. And that's what United need to be looking at. Interestingly, with Donny van der Beek, he's, uh, it's quite interesting with Donny. He's, um, he's averaging 6.3 um, defensive duels per game, so lower than McTominay and Fred, but he wins 72% of them. So at the moment, he's winning more defensive duels than Fabinho is. Um, it'll be interesting to see if he can keep it that high between now and the end of the season. I would say he wouldn't, but if he did, he's winning more defensive duels as a percentage than Fabinho is. So, But that will probably come down with more games. So yeah, interesting start. And obviously it goes to Fred in the Fred versus McTominay thing. He is more mobile. He is, getting, he is involved in more defensive duels than McTominay. And, you know, you'd probably expect that in the way that Fred plays and the way that McTominay plays. Um, aerial duels, this is no surprise. It's a domination from Scott McTominay. He's six foot nine. He's not. He's about six foot three. And Fred, I mean... Look, stand, stand them next to each other. You know, it's the old Tyson Fury stood next to Bilbo Baggins scenario, isn't it? Fred is a busy, low-gravity, tenacious player. McTominay is a taller, powerful, slower player. So, but where he where he's a massive advantage is in aerial duels. He's, he's actually averaging 3.8 aerial duels per game, whereas uh, Fred is 1.3. And, you know, McTominay corners at the base of the midfield in front of the back four... That is something that we've been using this for a while. You know, Fellaini was used for this as well. United, it's, and, and you know why? You know why we want a tall CDM? Because it's simple. The ball over the top, if you've got a tall CDM, you might be able to cut it out. 
And we want to stop the ball over the top because who have we got playing at centre-back? Maguire and we've had Lindelof. They lack a bit of pace. They're playing a bit deeper. So McTominay shielding the high ball is very, very important in that United side. And it has been for the last couple of years. Um, so in relation to uh, aerial duels uh, per 90, we've got 3.8, as I said, with McTominay on the screen. 1.3 with Fred. Donny's 2.4 and Fabinho is 2.9. So McTominay's aerial duels is a lot more than Fabinho at 2.9 to 3.8. And I think this is just what I've explained there. We're using, we're almost picking McTominay for his height because one of the best CDMs in the league, he's averaging, averaging three. McTominay's adding, adding, averaging nearly another one per game. So we're using McTominay for his aerial ability a lot more than Liverpool do with Fabinho, who is also quite tall. So it's that aerial ability of McTominay, which is a key factor in why he plays so many games, I think, and that's proven. In relation to how many of their aerial duels they win, though, because it's all right having 3.8 per game and 1.3 per game, but how many do you actually win? Well, again, McTominay is dominant. 67% of his aerial duels he's winning. Uh, Fred is winning 49%. So aerial duels, McTominay strong, you'd expect that, and that's obviously a key factor in why we pick him in a lot of games. Now, this is interesting. Successful defensive actions per 90. So this is how many defensive things you do well per 90. Um, and as you can see, um, this would include your, your aerial duels. This would include your defensive duels, your interceptions as well. Because people will say, well, hold on a minute. How come McTominay's doing 9.1 nine successful, successful defensive actions per game? But he's only averaging 6.9 defensive joules. That doesn't make sense. But defensive joules does not include interceptions. Um, so therefore, um, you know, and McTominay at 9.1 successful defensive actions. Not too bad. Fred, 10.5. So not too bad. Per game, that's not too bad for either of those two. Let's just compare that to what Fabinho is doing per game. Successful defensive actions for Fabinho, 10.1. So, you know... He is playing as a CDM. Fred's probably more of a box to box, but Fabinho 10.1 to McTominay's 9.1. And again, this is like comparing the defensive duels percentage. McTominay 58%, Fabinho 65%. McTominay's okay as a CDM. I don't think he is a CDM. He's doing okay, but there's a big difference on okay and elite, and which is what we need. We need a specialist in that position. So Fabinho is the better player uh, in that, as you would expect. Uh, passes, this is again a very key area, um, probably one of the keyest areas for you. Passes per 90, we'll talk about uh, accuracy in a moment, but passes per 90 um, for a Manchester United player um, as a holding midfielder is 40 passes per 90 good. Well, I can tell you that Fabinho is looking at um, passes per 90 he is looking at so we've got 40 for McTominay 52 for Fred and uh, Donny is coming in at about 41 uh, Fabinho is coming in at 54 passes per 90 so he is I think McTominay needs to be passing the ball more and I think this feeds into what we've spoken about before is that it's been highlighted that McTominay's not a CDM yes he can win the ball in the air and look, reasonable, successful defensive actions, not not groundbreaking. But we're Manchester United. We want to attack teams. And our CDM is averaging 40 passes per game when a Fabinho and a Fred is doing a 50 or a 52 or around the 50s. Um, it's been observed a lot of times with McTominay that he hides behind the striker to not, to not take the ball off the back four. I, I, I would want Manchester United CDM. And I'd be interested to know what Carrick's used to be. Um... I would want Manchester United CDM to be a lot higher than that on passes per 90. A lot higher. I'd want him to be one of the highest in the team, running the game, dictating the game. And I think this is the biggest issue that Man United have, and this is why we get called Bagel FC. We don't have a CDM who can run the game. Now, whether that's a Fabinho, whether it's a Rodri, whether it's a Jorginho, it doesn't really matter, but we don't have that player to do it. Fred can't do it. I'm not. Look, people might look, well, let's put Fred there. He's averaging 52 instead of 40. But Fred's first touch is like a trampoline at times. So we need a player who can run that midfield. And, it, and it's not personal to Fred or McTominay. You know, they might take it personally. I would hope they wouldn't do because they're professional footballers and they should understand that they're not top level CDMs. And I don't believe they ever will be. This is why we need a specialist CDM because you need somebody who can get hold of the ball 
and pass a lot. Um, in relation to their passing success, they're both around 88%, which sounds quite, quite high, but Fabinho's up at 90%. So, um, you know, it's a two... If you're playing as a CDM, you should be receiving the ball in a position where you're not under pressure and you've always got a five-yard pass to the side. You've always got a little bunny hop turn and pass it to your fullback. So you should have a very high percentage pass rate. Um, I would imagine that would come down if you're looking for more forward passes. I'm surprised that Fabinho's um, 90% is higher than McTominay's 88% because I've watched Liverpool and Fabinho plays a lot of good forward passes. So whereas McTominay... I think he refuses it a lot. So, and yet he's still got a lower percentage pass rate and a much lower passes per 90. So that's something that we definitely need to improve on. Now, success, we're staying with, uh, with, with attacking here. Successful attacking actions per 90. People will say, why is Fred won? He's got a lower score. Now, with, with this particular um, stat metric, successful attacking actions, actually the lower, the better. Because if you think about it, what they do is they divide, they divide uh, losing the ball with um, doing something good. So if you, let's say Fred gets the ball and he p tries to pass it to Rashford and he misses, that's one failure. Let's say he um, passes it into Ronaldo's feet, that's a, that's a, that's a success. So one success, one failure. What they do on this metric is if you've had 10 failures and five successes, 10 divided by five is two. So you'd have a score of two. Um, if you had 10 failures and 10 successes, that's 10 divided by 10 is one. So that's why the lower scores, the better. You want more defensive, you want more attacking options, um, more successful attacking actions compared to uh, failure, failure uh, successful atta uh, attacking actions. Basically, I'm, I'm mumbling. I'm talking. I'm, I'm losing my way. But basically, the lower the lower score is the better because you're dividing you're dividing failures by success. So if you've got more, if you've got five failures and ten successes, that's going to be a score of 0.5. So the lower score is the better, and Fred comes out on top, which. I'm surprised it's that big. I thought they'd be quite close on this. Um, 2.4 for McTominay, 1.6 for Fred. Of course, people are going to ask, well, what's Fabinho? 1.3. So, yeah, neither of them are actually performing as well as they need to. McTominay's is pretty poor at 2.4. Uh, Fred's is reasonable at 1.6, but Fabinho at 1.3. I mean, that you need somebody below 1.5, and uh, we don't have somebody in that role at the moment to do that. So why is that? Well, look, we know Fred gives the ball away sometimes. We know McTominay gives the ball away sometimes, and it's it's such an important position in the midfield that we, you know you need that you need that professionalism. So yeah, that I don't I don't yeah Fred wins, which surprises me a little bit. I actually thought McTominay took more care of the ball. But, um, you know, maybe Fred this season, you know, he's, he's has had a couple of assists in there as well. But that doesn't really matter. It's successful attacking actions per 90. It's averaged over every bloody game. So it's not just because Fred's had a few assists. It's it, it, it's based on your average over 90 minutes for as many games they've played, of which they've played quite a, through, a few. So, yeah, interesting there. And I think what we're starting to see here is the picture, aren't we? We're seeing that in the defensive duels... Um, Fred and um, McTominay are averaging winning 68% of their, sorry, 58% of their defensive duels. And Fabinho's at 65%. That's a big, big difference. Um, passes, you know, Fabinho's up at what? 50, 52, was it? Uh, passes per game average with a 90% success rate. McTominay and Fred, 88% success rate. And, and McTominay's averaging 40 passes. It's, it's 12 less passes per game. And then uh, successful attacking actions, 1.3 for Fabinho, 1.6 for Fred, 2.4 for McTominay. So you can see the improvement we could make next season by bringing in a CDM that's just that little bit better than all these. Maybe not as good as a Fabinho, but, you know, better than what we have. And I think we would get that with a specialist. And then I think this is a really important metric as well, um, discipline. McTominay, 1.7 fouls committed per game. Um, and Fred 1.2, Fabinho is looking at uh, 1.13. So he's lower than Fred and he's lower than McTominay at 1.13. Um, 10 yellow cards for McTominay across the season, nine for Fred. I think we have a discipline problem. 
I think we do have a discipline problem and um, they do commit too many fouls. And I think they commit too many fouls mainly because they're out of position a lot. They're desperate to win the tackle. They're desperate to impress. They're not specialists in that position. And I think Fred and McTominay this season have been quite indisciplined. We've seen that with the yellow cards. And they do make a lot of late tackles or mistimed tackles because I don't think that this is, that is their specialist position. And maybe they're too eager and maybe they're trying to stamp their authority on a game where they can't stamp their authority on the game in a uh, progressive uh, specialist way. So they try and do it in a physical way and, 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 then, and then they give a, they're, they're giving fouls away. Because Fabinho is very physical and yet fouls committed, it's 1.13 um, per game. So, you know, he's more disciplined. He's, you know, so is he going into tackles that Fred and McTominay are going into? Is he avoiding those tackles? So it's interesting. But look, I've, I've enjoyed bringing the Fabinho benchmark in and you can see the improvements that we need to hit in the summer with the CDM. That's not going to be new to Ralph Ranyuk or the new manager. They, they will know all this. They've got scouts who will be telling them all this. These are the areas that we need to improve on. This is what Liverpool have got. This is what Man City have got with Rodri. This is what we're doing. And these per 90 stats are very important because, look, different stats, different websites, etc. But they're all going to be rough the same when you compare the gaps between a specialist and what we've got at the moment. But what is interesting as well is the whole McTominay versus Fred thing. You know, we've been looking at the summer. I've been discussing the summer and we're talking about that and we're talking about where we need to improve. But there is actually a conversation here of McTominay versus Fred. And as you can see, Fred is the better midfielder statistically this summer and we've neglected that in the conversation because we're basically basically saying neither of them are good enough for where we need to go but compare them like we compared Tellez and Shaw who should be the starting left back like we compared Lindelof and Maguire who should be the starting centre back at no point and I'm guilty of this have we actually discussed who should be the starting midfielder because we both all know that both of those players are not good enough for what we need to do if we want to progress and move forward but the interesting thing is if you actually have that conversation and let's pretend it's a box-to-box -box and not a holding midfielder because I think McTominay's best position is box-to-box -box, and I think Fred's position is box-to-box -box. and the funny thing is Fred would be the clear box-to-box -box winner based on what we've gone through here as a CDM I don't trust Fred as a CDM I don't really rate McTominay there, but I understand why we're doing it. And even then, you know, he's not doing a great job. He's doing an okay job. We need much, much better. But if we do bring a CDM and these two want to compete for the box-to-box -box role, well, surely you go for Fred. He's way more proactive in his defensive duels on, you know, tenacity and getting involved. Aerial duels, he's never going to win. McTominay is a mountain compared to him. But success, successful defensive actions, he's winning on that. Passes, he's winning on that. Successful attacking actions, he's winning on that. And fouls committed, he's, he's less, dis, you know, he, he's not as in, indisciplined as uh, McTominay is. So, look, it's not night and, you know, it, it, it's not a good night for these players at all. I, I mean, I, I suspect both of these players will be here in two years, let alone one year. But, um, and look, the quality level for me, first team, neither of them. But bench quality players you're probably looking more at Fred than McTominay. But it's interesting because people will, 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 will want to see what they want to see. But for ultimately, for me, we need to buy a CDM. We know where the improvements can be. Um, and it's a very interesting comparison. But look, in relation to McTominay, you can 100% see why Ollie used him so much. Because in relation to aerial duels, he's, he's very good at it. Make sure you smash a like on the video, give us your thoughts below, and uh, I'll speak to you all a bit. We've got a cracking live show coming up for you at 8 o'clock, talking strikers um, and, of, of course, all the latest news. But get your comments in below, smash a like on the video. I'll speak to you all on the next one. Thanks for watching.